I'm here in the edit page of DaVinci Resolve, nothing special. But uh, note that this is the DaVinci Resolve Studio version for Studio 19. And I'm gonna do something you don't normally see. I'm gonna come up to help and click deactivate license. I'm gonna click deactivate, let it do its thing. Now, uh, this version of Resolve is using the license that I got right here. I've got a little card, it's got a code. I can use it for two activations, that's cool. I just deactivated that code. And if I don't have a code, it forces me to quit Resolve. And when I load Resolve back up, uh, it has an option here to use a license key to reactivate DaVinci Resolve. But brand new in DaVinci Resolve 19, it has a second option to use Blackmagic Cloud ID. If I click that, click continue, log in, select my company, Sterling Supply Co., click log in, then DaVinci Resolve license assigned to your account has been successfully activated I click continue and it loads up DaVinci Resolve Studio 19 without any of this. What's going on? This is something brand new that's only available uh, through the recent updates that came with uh, Resolve 16 and specifically the updates that came to Blackmagic Cloud. Is this the dreaded move of DaVinci Resolve going subscription? No. but. Kinda, but no, no. Grant Petty, the CEO of Blackmagic Design, has made his stance on the subscription model for creative software very clear. Here are some things he's said about it just over the last year or two. You know, if you have a TV subscription, you only really lose access to movies if you can't pay for it. However, in our industry, you're actually creating content, not consuming it, not just consuming it, you know? So the work you create is in the software you use, and that could be years of work. So the problem with software subscriptions is if, you know, you lose your work if you can't pay and you have to pay up every month even if you can't afford it. So what happens if you're out of work for a few months? Um, there's really nothing you can do, you still have to pay. And if you don't pay, you lose your ability to work. You know, But on some software, you could even lose years of work. So you kind of get punished the more you use the software. All venture capitalists really seem to care about now is subscriber counts. So a company's value is really calculated by estimating the profit expected from the customers over time. That's why so many technology companies have sky high valuations. Even if the tech company doesn't make a profit, it's because the investors believe they're locking in customers for life. But the problem is customers hate it. You, know, you simply won't have a customer for life if the customers don't like how you treat them. So I think with DaVinci, we have a better business model here. It's actually free. So it's easy to download and it's easy to learn how to use. Then over time, if you do well and start to make some money, perhaps you buy something from us. You, know, you might upgrade to a color panel or an audio console. You know, for us to make money, we actually have to help you make money. We only do well, do well if you do well. But in the update video he did at NEB 2024, just a day or two ago now, he laid out the very good reasons why especially large productions need to manage these licenses and why a rental agreement for those licenses works best for them and could really be a hurdle for them not using Resolve at all. Now, one of the features is rental licenses. And this is for the full DaVinci Resolve Studio. Now, I'm not a big fan of paying for cloud licenses for creative software. You know, it locks up the archive of your work unless you keep paying, but large customers need it. You know, they can't purchase software because they can't manage the licenses. Plus, large companies have complex accounting departments. They don't want to buy licenses because they've got to manage them as assets. Uh, they've got to manage where they are, um, dongles and, and license keys. So what they do is they need, and also they need to cost the license cost against the show or the film. Uh, so rental licenses are also faster to get up and running. With rental licenses, you can like spin up 100 new licenses in seconds and then they can cost those licenses against the show. They can cancel the, the licenses when the show's finished, or they can add and remove uh, staff from, you know, as they like. So for large companies, rental licenses are actually quite simple. Now, the good thing about DaVinci Resolve is you can still buy it outright. Uh, so this means that the, um, the rental licenses really complement the paid licenses. So that's the primary purpose of a rental license for DaVinci Resolve. But that doesn't mean that there aren't other use cases for more of the public using Resolve, especially for those who are looking at uh, stepping up to the full paid version, the studio. And I think labeling these as a rental is, is smart branding towards that goal. If you want to use DaVinci Resolve Studio personally or for your own business, you should go and buy it. The value is tremendous. You get all the upgrades, you know, you know all the normal reasons to buy DaVinci Resolve Studio. But what if you are pretty content with the free version of DaVinci Resolve, but you're looking at a product that could really use one or two features from DaVinci Resolve Studio, but you're only going to be working on that product for like a couple weeks to a month. Or what if you are using the free version and you want to update to Studio, but you just want a little bit more of a test run without the commitment of that $300 upfront. 
Well, in either of those situations, you could go onto the Blackmagic uh, Cloud website that I have uh, right here. It is free to make a Blackmagic Cloud uh, account. If you wanna start using Blackmagic Cloud, this is where you get all of that set up, decide how much space you want, how many project libraries you want, but also new uh, in this update, we have this organizations window. And even as a single user, you can create an organization and then you have this option to rent DaVinci Resolve Studio licenses. I went through a quick checkout process. Uh, the only other small hurdle or hoop is that uh, I was already in here as a member when I created this organization. I had to add myself to a group so that when I uh, assigned this license, I had to point to a group. It has an option to uh, assign that to an individual. It says it users or group, but it didn't recognize me as a standalone user. So I had to add myself to a group so that I can then uh, assign this license to a group, which assigned it to me. And then like you saw, as soon as I logged in using my DaVinci Resolve uh, cloud ID on that loading screen of Resolve, it recognized I had been assigned a license and used that DaVinci Resolve Studio to get me into studio up and running. I don't intend on keeping this uh, rental going since you know I do have these licenses sitting on these nice little cards, <laughs> but I thought it was worth checking out and it works great. Now in either example that I spelled out previously, uh, if you do a rental for a month or two and then you also end up uh, buying a full license for DaVinci Resolve Studio, of course that overall price will be more, but you know you do get that flexibility of trying it or giving it a little test run first. So you've got to let me know, do either of those uh, two use cases make sense for you for why someone might check out a uh, rental of a DaVinci Resolve Studio license? Do you see any other reasons someone might want to? Do you see this as a portent for the ultimate doom of DaVinci Resolve going subscription? I don't, but you could be wrong if you want. <laughs> what do you think? Let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.